I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And the whole thing this time is it's all dark in here because I'm having to do it so late in the day. It's 542 on a Sunday afternoon, and I don't have a whole lot of light in here because my the sky is getting all dark on me. Anyway, so that's why it's a little bit dark, and that's why I'm going with the webcam instead of the new camera. I probably should have used the other camera. I bet it would probably have picked up light better. But anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> this is Dr. Newman, and this is... Netcast number 200. Hey! <laughs> anyway, uh, netcast number 200. Got a lot to do about that. Also, um, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Let me also say very quickly that we have an awesome sponsor in Citrix Systems. Citrix is graciously considered to be our sponsor for the go to assist express product and by going to this URL right here the special URL you can get in on an amazing offer for go to assist now getting assistance on your PC if you are not a geek can be challenging but there are those geek friends out there yes who call on you and want you to fix their machine and if you're in that position, you're going to need some way to get to their machine because you don't want to drive all the way across the country just to help some guy find an icon. Know what I mean? So go to Assist Express can help because it is the best method to get to someone else's machine, particularly if they're non-technical. So this offer will help you out if you are a geek that has friends who aren't geeks because you can help them out. All right? So take advantage of the special offer. You will like it. Go to that URL. I'm telling you. Okay, we got so much to do on this netcast. Oh my goodness, this is the 200th netcast. Like I said, I'm going to jump in here to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, as it says right here, D R B I L L dot C C for computer curmudgeon. And let me quickly cover some of the things that I need to cover before we get into the meat of the program. Here we go. The IBM PC turns 30. This is going to be, see, the 200th episode. This is kind of amazing that there's so much to celebrate in this episode. The IBM PC turns 30. And, man, I tell you what, it does kind of make me feel a little bit old. That's what I say here in the article. I mean, I've been in the computer field now for over 30 years before there was an IBM PC, and it was all VAX terminals that I was working with. But anyway, matter of fact, even before the IBM PC, I had a Texas Instruments Professional Computer, which was actually better than the IBM PC in its day, but it just didn't catch on. IBM's name, man, it took off. So that original IBM PC, all 4.77 megahertz. Megahertz, not gigahertz. Ew. Anyway, so there you go. Next item. Adobe introduces Edge, a tool for HTML5. Now, here's the thing. Adobe is behind Flash, right? And Flash, they're really pushing. But the handwriting's on the wall, guys, about Flash. For one thing, Steve Jobs won't let you run Flash on Apple stuff. He's put his foot down on that, which I think is a little lame myself. But he says he's not going to support Flash. So that has actually sped up the adoption of the HTML5 standard, which provides a video me uh, meta tag, mega tag. <laughs> I've been working with the Game Master so much, I've got Mega Man on the mind. That's all he plays is Mega Man music. Anyway, we'll talk more about the Game Master later in this episode. At any rate, Adobe introduces Edge, which is a tool that allows you to do with HTML5 video what you can do with the Flash video. So are they going to retire Flash? Just saying, makes you wonder. All right, next item. Oh man, 
I knew it was too good to be true. The IE study that we talked about in the last episode, in episode 199, was a hoax. Man, dude. But it's like somebody said in one of the comments they sent. I like this comment. They said, no, IE users are dumb. <laughs> Even if the study wasn't true, the IE users, the Internet Explorer users are still dumb. And then I said, well, yeah, I kind of like the official word of the study, but hey, we'll go with anecdotal evidence. You know, they always talk about anecdotal evidence instead of real scientific evidence. Well, anyway. And then this item, 20 years of the World Wide Web. We just talked about the 30th anniversary of the IBM computer. Well, now we got the 20th anniversary yesterday, Saturday. I'm doing this on a Sunday for once, which is weird. I'll explain why in a minute. <laughs> on the World Wide Web. So there you go. Actually, the light is peeking through the clouds now. I'm beginning to get a little better lit. So there you go. And, you know, the World Wide Web really took off more to the point in 1992, which is when the Game Master was born. Cool. So uh, I'm beginning to rain on my skylight. Wow. Anyway, I'm random. Um, so here's the thing about this episode, episode 200. And that is we're going to have a special Game Master segment. We're going to celebrate some of the geekiness that has gone on through the years of the DrBill.TV show. So we're going to go to that in just a moment. Still teasing it. But before I do, let me mention that we really appreciate Carbonite being a sponsor of the Dr. Bill show. Carbonite is the best backup solution across the interwebs so that you can back up your system. Because face it, you're going to have a hardware crash. You're going to have some kind of problem one day. And you don't want to lose your data. You don't want to lose the actual files that make up your photos and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to need Carbonite. And this URL right here, the special bit.ly URL, is your way to get in on this special deal with Carbonite. You really need to take advantage of it. Okay? All right. Now, whoa! <laughs> that drum roll is telling us that it's a Geek Software of the Week, but it's very special this week because it's the 200th anniversary episode. Probably somebody will give me a hard time about using the term anniversary. You see, a lot of people argue that if you have the 200th episode, the anniversary can't be until the 201st. I'm not going to get into that, okay? I'm just not going to argue it. Anyway, <laughs> the bottom line is that... Where was I headed with this? The Geek Software of the Week is this week is Geek Software of the Le Week for Linux. It's hard to say. Nah. Geek Software of the Week Linux Edition. This product is called Airtime, and it's free, as most, of course, Linux software is. It's open source. The new, as in G-N-U, new GPL license and it is free and it's awesome. It is software to automate a radio station. You may say, Dr. Bill, when am I ever going to automate a radio station? Yes, but you might. You never know. And so I'm going to show you right now airtime in a demo. All right, we're going to look at a really neat piece of software here. Uh, it is open source, which I, of course, as you know, I love. And it is from a uh, company called Source Fabric, and the product is Airtime. Now, this is installed on Ubuntu Linux. Uh, it is actually on a, a slightly older version of Ubuntu, is what they recommended, because you know basically when it was written, it was written to that particular edition. The uh, installation instructions are very clear, and I really uh, enjoyed setting it up. Matter of fact, it was a total geek out. Uh, <laughs> and you know I love geek outs. Well, I shouldn't have put a comma in my admin, but anyway. <laughs> the admin account, the amazing super secret password that I mistyped. I do that sometimes with passwords. <clears throat> Last pass to say, do you want me to remember this password? No. I'm testing, dude. Anyway, you'll notice it goes into an interface here. Now what this is... I hadn't even told you that yet. What this is, is radio programming for internet radio. Now, as you know, I work with WFR.org, Word of Faith Radio. 
uh, and uh, I'm the technical director there and I really enjoy finding new ways of doing what we do. So basically what it does is give you a web interface. This is running off of Apache on the Linux box that you build for the application and you can come in here and add media by clicking add files, selecting files. Now I've already got this song in there but let's just go ahead and upload it. Love, Peace, Joy. Once you uh, get it in the interface there you can click start upload and you'll notice the status over here as it uploads and the check that says yes it's there. Alright so let's go to our playlist builder. You create a new playlist and you have all the songs that you've uploaded over here. Now I'm just going to put in a title of test. Once again, if I could just type test. Alright, we're going to then uh, submit that. And now I have an empty playlist over here. So I can literally just drag and drop the songs that I want to add to that playlist right over here. I also have the ability to uh, set up crossfades between the songs and this is the crossfade here. Pretty neat stuff. Now once I'm done editing, as it says, I've created a playlist. Now I can go to the calendar. This is where it gets really interesting. Now you can see I spent yesterday, instead of recording uh, the <laughs> netcache yesterday, I spent it totally geeking out <laughs> on this software. Uh, that's why the playlist goes on and on and on. But here we are on a Sunday morning before church when I'm recording this. So we're going to create a new show. So let's add a show. We'll just call it Untitled. And we'll say that it's going to run start time of, see right now currently it's 8.49. So I'm going to have a start time of 8.50. Uh, no, that's too soon. We won't get ready before 8.50. Let's go to 8.55. That'll give us just a little bit more time. All right, so we've set up the amount of time. We can record a lot of, well, semi-live, as live as it can be, as Todd Cochran says on Geek News Central. Uh, you could record a show here and then air that show later. You can put in the host. You can even come in here and change the background of the um, the uh, display so I'm going to click that and then add this show now you see we've added a show here if I click on that show I can then add and remove content so we have a show here uh, called test and this is the the last one here is the one that I did this morning so let's just drag that over and now test with a timeline indicator here is part of that show. So let's OK it. And now that show will start at 8.55. Now here's the other thing. I can come in here and I can actually edit that show. And if I want to go into when, I can schedule it right down to uh, the mark. Let's let it start at 0.2 and then we'll update it and that way we'll only have to wait a minute till it starts play. While we're waiting on that though let me go in and uh, I'm gonna I'm, you probably can't see it fully here on the screen what I'm doing but I'm looking for VLC my very favorite media player and uh, let's go ahead and pull that on down here so you can see the player and then I'm going to click on network stream and I'm going to put in the URL of my test server here 168.4.4 there we go and uh, I was experimenting earlier so that's not exactly the correct thing so I'm going to go ahead and play that well there's there's no stream to play because we're not on air yet, are we? So we'll wait a minute. Actually, we'll wait, what? About 10 seconds. <laughs> and once this goes on air, 
the show will have started. And there it is, on air. So now we can click this. All right, what's the matter here? Did I not put in the right URL? Open network stream, 8,000 WFO. Oh, that's the problem. There's your problem. <laughs> to quote the myth about the earth. Now, we're playing second chapter of Acts, Which Way the Wind Blows. How cool is that? Now, of course, I have the sound turned off so that you can't hear it. I imagine if I cranked it up really loud, you might hear it a little bit, but I, I won't do that. Anyway, it's actually broadcasting over Internet radio. How cool is that? So the idea here is you can program a radio station. And you notice up here, look at this. This is so cool. I love this. You can actually see what is playing, what your station is, what's up next in the playlist and that it would even show what's show you know what was the previous thing that it showed is the spot up here and of course it even shows untitled show and then it's on here just a lot of cool stuff so this is using icecast 2 to um to broadcast so let's go there and take a look at that port 8000 this is IceCast2, and notice the status shows one current listener, which is me. Remember, I cranked up VLC, so it's showing that there's one listener, and I'm still listening over here. So, um, and if this is another cool thing, if I go here, it will actually show. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, you know what? It's not going to show there because I'm. This is an address that I have entered in DynDNS, which by the way is another neat little hint and tip here. DynDNS allows you to set up dynamic, that's what Dyn stands for, dynamic DNS entries on the internet and point back to your own personal machine behind your firewall if you set up your router correctly. And that's a story for another day. But at any rate, it won't go back through the firewall and back into my own machine kind of loop. It won't do that. So that's why I have to use the address, the internal NATed IP address. I'm just getting so geeky. <laughs> anyway, let's go back here to the schedule, and I'll show you what I was trying to show you, which is the Now Playing. There we go. Now Playing shows you not only what is currently playing, but what is going to play. Now, you notice it says gap until show end. 2,960 seconds. That's because the show that I created, I just created a one-hour show and I only put in enough to fill a couple of songs. So, you know what I'm saying? It's got a little space here at the end that would be dead air, which is a bad thing in radio. But I think you can see the coolness of this, how simple and clean it is. I mean, look how professional that looks. Isn't that awesome? And this is open source, totally free software. I love open source. Anyway, there you go. This is Airtime by, uh, let me log out here. Do, 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 do. Source Fabric. <laughs> I started to say Source Forge, which is a repository of open source software, but they're, the company here is Source Fabric, and they have released this under the uh, new GPL, and it is just really an awesome piece of software. Now, it's highly geeky, and they have really excellent instructions and really excellent troubleshooting uh, on their website, uh, but it took me pretty much half a day to get it all set up and working correctly because there's a lot of dependencies and a lot of things you have to install, but this is awesome. Well, there you go. Wasn't that cool? I mean, dude, cool stuff. Now... I've got so much going on. Oh, my goodness. This next thing is what you've been waiting for. You've been sitting here going, Dr. Bill, Dr. Bill, what about the Roku giveaway? What about the Roku 2 giveaway? Ha <laughs> ha. We had plenty of entries, plenty of entries, and they sent in, in their email, the correct information, and we put them all on little tiny strips of paper, little, 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 tiny strips of paper, and you'll see them here in just a moment. During the Game Master segment. Se segment. Segment. 
I just gotta keep working on these words. Alrighty then. <clears throat> so welcome to the Game Master segment for Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. As you know, this is my son Ben the Game Master. Technically they don't. I don't think they've ever actually seen me before, except in costume. Well, that may be. Actually, during your birthday celebration, I think it was your 15th birthday. No, no, no. I mean the robot costume from... Oh, the robot costume. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you posted a picture of that. But well, but they saw you as... Uh, you remember when we did the stand in Lee? Yes. And you were dressed as... Some random superhero. Some random super person. Yeah. Anyway, so yes, there was that episode. Go back in the archives. Check it out. Anyway... That wasn't a plug at all. No, well, I know that I'm a f down with the plugs. Mm. Um, so, we are going to do a game after. Diet Dr. Pepper. Yes, <laughs> Diet Pepsi for me. <laughs> Diet Dr. Pepper here. We're not doing like the Kevin Rose thing with uh, uh, Alex that where they're comparing beers. We just don't oh. do beers. You know what I'm saying? True, yeah. Diet Pepsi, I definitely do. So, technically it wouldn't even be legal for me to be doing that, even if we did. So, yeah. Uh, see, so you're 19. No, you will be 19. Will be 19. But you're 18. But I'm it's 21 sure that, in North Carolina. Yeah, 21. But in any case, we don't drink, so it doesn't matter. Exactly. <laughs> don't have to think about these things, which is why I don't know these age things. By the way, notice there's a basket of fruit here. Yes. That neither of us are even so much as touching. No, and it's real. It is real. It is real fruit. It is real fruit. Um, the banana I'm looking at, you know, I like bananas. That banana is looking quite good and ripe maybe almost to the edge of too much mm -hmm. but hey anyway so that's a centerpiece yes it's it's courtesy of thing. his mom yes uh she didn't even plan this this is just normal it's kind of the way it is uh and we have this thing back here which is blue and white and whatever it is in a glass that's eh, i think it's actually plastic it, yeah it's plastic i was hoping it would go ting yeah totally but it didn't don't. go ting so what do you think? This would probably go ting, but I that don't know. might go ting, but it might be it all it might also go crunch. So anyway, the point is yes, that well. we're talking about the giveaway. The yes. Roku giveaway. We have our, uh, this is the official Japanese Super Fancy Soup Bowl. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna randomize a bit myself. I'm randomizing. Mm -hmm. I do you that. do that, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of my thing. Yeah, it's what you do. Pretty it's what much I do, long. pretty much. Anyway, so we're giving away a free Roku, which is in that room. See, last time it was in a different room, and now it's in that room. Is it a Roku or a Roku 2? It is a Roku 2, actually. I thought so. That's a good point. Roku 2, brand new, just released like a couple of weeks ago. The controller or the controller? <laughs> yeah. The remote is totally an NES controller. It just yeah, is. it's got the little cross thing yeah, in the AV buttons. The, yes. That's control what pad. Control pad. Control pad, yes. Yeah. You were going to say AB buttons. No, I was going to say control pad, but I couldn't think of the term. I couldn't. I didn't know the term. It's control pad. So, okay. And now you know. There you go. And it's got like a little uh, 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 motion yes. thingy in it, so you can actually move the cursor around on the screen and play Angry Birds, which I'm all down with angry birds moving on so anyway so the whole idea of this randomization process is we have put all the people's names uh which we can't show you because then they would no longer be random well not random but what do you call it when you let people know it wouldn't be private yes It'd be a privacy issue that's what i'm trying for sure so we're randomizing and the whole idea is is i'm not even going to pick it we're going to let the game master pick it out, and then we will know, and and definitely kind of rifle around in there a good bit. I know. And let's let's see what the, this is the big moment. You know what I'm saying? Da, so da, 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 I'll probably da, 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 insert like a drum roll or something right around in here somewhere, just for jobs. Anyway, here we go. <gasps> the name. Dum da dum. I totally handed it to him backwards. Ooh. He did. He and upside down. And upside down. Well, no, but it was right side up, but then you it would have been. It, it depends on your perspective. It's it's a perpetual perspective, infinite vortex. I said infinite that perspective vortex, actually. Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, so here it is. The name. Can we delay it any further? Hunter Lee. There you go. Hunter Lee is the winner. I'm so excited. This Which is, is a cool name. I like yes, that name. Hunter Lee. It sounds like a superhero identity. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Kind of does. So there you go. So all you other folks, I'm sorry. I wish I had one to give everybody. 
But I don't. That would be a lot of money, I don't think. It'd be a lot of money, and it would also kind of, the tension wouldn't be as strong if everybody just went, eh, i got to send an email, I'll get one free. I mean, you could have at least, you know, maybe had a second place and a third place prize. Well, Same. that may be, but this is only the 200th episode. Maybe by ah. the 1,000th episode. There you go. You heard you know, it first. We may give away a car. I doubt that. No, I very seriously doubt that. A flying car, actually, but by the 1,000th episode, it's taken us what? How many years? Five years to get to 200? Of course, there was a two-year skip in there. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, because I just couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> the pressure was too much. Yeah, it was just too much. But now I'm just... The I'm pressure just, of being random and talking to a I'm microphone calmer every week. now. You know, I've, I've centered myself. So, anyway... Yeah, let's move on. Just, uh, <laughs> just move right along. So, okay, so we want to talk about some, uh, some Game Mastery stuff uh, and some geeky stuff and whatever else happens to be on your mind. So, what was it we were talking about, talking about? Talking about, talking about. Yes. Well, um, there were... There. There were four superhero movies this year. I thought there were three. Yeah, that's what I thought, too, until I saw a movie poster on our way somewhere that reminded me that X-Men First Class was also this year. That's right. That was so long ago, I'd almost forgotten. Yep. So we've had four superhero movies. Four superhero movies, and no one to review them on Dr. Bill's podcast. Well, that may be until now. Until now. So there you go. That's what we're doing today. So we've got, uh, we've got Captain America. Captain America, most recent one. Uh, we've got, what else? Green Lantern. Green Lantern, which is my favorite. Thor. Thor, which is and, good. And X-Men First Class, which... And X-Men First Class. I think it's probably safe to say our least favorite because we didn't even remember it. Well, yes. But I, I did enjoy it. It was a lot better than I thought it, it was, would be. It was engaging... You know, and I didn't like you know that Patrick Stewart wasn't going to be no no Professor X, but the guy who was Professor X did a pretty good job. Yes, I mean, granted, young Professor X. Oh, yeah, it's a different sort of Professor X, but wasn't it's, bald. <laughs> well, they, they they let you know that like three times in the movie that he wasn't bald. Yeah, he kept talking about I've got my hair. You know, foreshadowing that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, Except well. they did it a few too many times. Uh, yeah, but anyway, it was, it was a little little over. Yeah. They also had a red nightcrawler for no obvious reason. (laughs) Well, yes, but I'm not sure that was really supposed to be the nightcrawler. Well, no, of course not, but I'm saying it's kind of They never mentioned his... Well, they mentioned... They they mentioned his name. I I don't remember remember. what it was. We forget a lot about this movie. It must have really been an impression. Such a movie, yeah. Yeah, it just impressed us a lot, but... The only memorable part was Logan's one line. (laughs) Yeah, well. Yeah, well. Uh... Yeah, at least they got him to do that. That was that was a nice nod. That was nice. I was not expecting it. I didn't know it was yeah. going to happen. So I no spoiler, spoiler alert. Well, well, by now they've seen it. Yeah, you know, I mean, these guys, <laughs> they've seen it. Yeah, pretty much. Um. Okay. So, so why are we reviewing it again? Just for well, jollies? because it's a superhero movie, and it's the kind of thing we would talk about. Jollies. And pretty we, much jollies. Well, yeah, and we talk about things a lot along this line. Why do I keep saying jollies? I don't know. It's anyway. Maybe a Doctor Who reference? No. Not really. No. Not really, no. Jolly old England. Moving That's on. That's what I was thinking of. Yes, well. All right, so so I give it... Uh, well, hang on. I've actually got categories for you. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. Done. I'm in trouble because I don't, I don't do well with, with pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, the categories I've thought up are acting. How was the acting in the movie? I act pretty well, actually. <laughs> no. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um... Plot line. How was the plot line? Did mm. it make sense? Were there mm. plot holes? Mm. Etc. Okay. And you can also throw in, did it match the original comics while we're oh, at it? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that'll that. hurt. <laughs> um, the, um, I want to say music was one of them, but I don't think it was. I, I, I was going to write these down. And How about totally ambiance? That can cover sure. music and style and... Sure. Oh, special effects. Special of effects. Course. Of course. Eh. For superhero movies, that makes sense. And I don't remember if there was another one. So we'll just go with no, that. No, we'll just kind of wing it. And then, of uh, course, no that. score. Cause we wing things. So, so I'm thinking we can give, like, out of five scores for the categories. And so then zero to five? One to five. One to five? And then for the overall Should score, it's one. one to ten. Oh. Yeah. Boy, that's complicated. It involves math, so you'll have to help me. It involves a slight amount of math. A slight math, but so that's enough to kind of knock me out. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. We're talking X-Men. X-Men, yes. And what were the categories again? <laughs> All right, let's start with acting. How acting, was the acting, yes. The acting was 
pretty good overall. Overall, I, I like so. Professor X, like you Professor said. Professor X Magneto was excellent. Magneto stole the movie. He he pretty much did. He really did. There were a few that really did kind of bring it down he a had, little bit. He had more to work with, to be yeah, honest. That's because, true. Because you know his character was actually more central to the movie and. They gave a lot more background. I will say that his uh, arch nemesis dude that he was hunting. Yes. His acting wasn't always there. I don't know. Which is interesting because uh, he's Kevin Bacon. Yeah, that was pretty funny, actually. Yeah, you know, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. So, but, so this movie is now a hub of Baconness. Baconness. Yes. Which means that we should love it, but apparently not. Well, you know, in terms of internet memology. Memology, yeah. That's it would be. Word. It is a great word. I make these things up. Uh, right on the spur of the moment. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it, it will live in infamy just for that. He was overall pretty decent. I just yeah. there were a few scenes where I felt like he wasn't he, getting the whole villain. He thing. got the evil kind of down a little bit, but yeah. he was a, almost. I don't want to say a friendly villain. No, that's <laughs> well, not no. He was but, personable. Which can be good. Well, okay. Let's talk about him as opposed to uh, Hugo Weaving as the Red Skull. Well, that's not even a contest, actually. Well, that's my point. I mean, I mean, Hugo Weaving we'll as the Red Skull was we'll, evil. We'll get to that when we get to it, though. Let's, of course, he tends to play evil very he well. He does evil very well. Yeah, you kind of wonder if he's really evil in person. Probably and just is. Hides it. But anyway. Just saying. Anyway. Although, I mean, you know, House, Hugh Laurie plays House, then he also played Stuart Little's dad. So. That's true. Well, that just makes him an amazing actor. Amazing, yeah. Because that's just wrong <laughs> on so many levels. It's pretty weird. Anyway. But anyway, uh, anyway so, so for the acting, I would give it maybe a 3.5. Yeah, I'll go along with that. Maybe a four. Maybe even a four. Maybe a four. I'm going to say 3.5 because I'm ornery. They didn't like... It wasn't exciting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, pretty much. In terms of acting. Yeah. So, um, okay, so next so, category. Next category. Let's see. Um, that would be plot. Plot line. Plot, yes. Now, in that regard, I was fairly impressed. It was pretty good. I like the story. But it wasn't the comic book. Yeah, with the added supposition about the comic book, it really wasn't it, comic. Yeah, but as a story, but as a, it, it was, was pretty, pretty doggone good. I don't so, know. I would say probably four. A, f- a four? A four. All right, man, I'd go with a six. <laughs> oh, we can only go to five, can't we? <laughs> yes, <laughs> five. five. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> okay, so four. Well, so then four. I'm going to go back and say three on the other category. Oh, okay. So, because I, I didn't know what I was doing. Ah, well, that explains That's, a lot. That explains <laughs> quite a bit, actually. All right, so next category. But yes, uh, next category. Well, I, let me throw one more thing in with the plot. Uh-huh. I did like how they tied in the Cuban Missile Crisis thing. Oh, yes. And worked around that. That History. was really impressive. Now, of course, today, there's not many people who would even remember that or have heard about it in history since they don't teach history anymore. Yeah, well. But other than that, other maybe than they'll that. go to Wikipedia and look it up. So it'll be an, it's educational, an educational film. Yeah, so exactly. It, it gets points for that, doesn't uh, that's it? That's true. I'll give it points. So. Uh, so next was ambiance. Yes, I like that word. Uh, I liked it. For a lot of reasons, uh, the Russian ships, the American ships, the yeah, all that uh, was good. Banshee flying. Uh, oh yeah, I almost forgot Banshee was even in the movie. Yeah, really. But yeah, uh, he didn't look like Banshee very much. He did much, not look like Banshee at still, all. But still, it was, was good. Cool. It was good. I also liked the way that he learned to fly and had to jump off the building and go. Yeah. Ah! And you know, well, the he didn't work or he didn't. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty. Funny. So, <laughs> but yeah, I will say I don't really remember the music from it at all. I don't either. And I normally remember music. Yeah. So it's kind of must have been kind of boring. I don't know. I give it. I mean, you know, in terms of memory. Yeah. And it, you, this is an early movie of the summer. So true. I give it at least like a three. Last year. Well, yeah. I give it at least a three for all the three. All the cool stuff like I'll go the with four props and stuff. But because I really thought it was pretty good. Okay. Well, I, I say three because yeah. I'm apparently you're a harder horrible. But anyway, well, no, you're, you're just a harder <laughs> judge of these things. What do you call yeah. it? A harsher critic. Yes, well, Ain't too easy you've going. noticed I don't actually go below three ever, so. Well, there you go. That's true. I, I would be willing to go below three. I, I would if there were any bad movies this supper. Supper. Supper? But I, I don't think there were any bad movies this See, summer at all. it's an inherited thing with the tongue. Mm, apparently. Is that it? Must be. Anyway. Um. So. Next category. Next, final category. Oh, category. There's another category? There's one more category. What's the category? Um. 
You've made me forget it. Special effects. Special effects. <laughs> this that was pretty good. That Special was effects. pretty good in this movie. A- or Alex Sumner, Sumner's, Summer, Summers. Summers. The Just can't talk. Havoc. Alex Summers was he? No, oh, Alex Summers. I was yeah. thinking not Scott Summers. Scott Summers, yes, who wasn't in it. Yeah, no. Alex Summers is had. Who, a by the way, should not have cool. been in the movie because he's you know younger than Scott. But anyway, Havoc is younger than Scott, isn't he? I think he may be. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Oh well. So they kind of fail. Well, that. okay. So basically, I think there's some fail in terms of staying true to the comic book, particularly since they had yeah. Mora, who was uh, Doctor X's uh, Doctor <laughs> Professor X's girlfriend during the whole Phoenix episode yes, thing, the thing in the comics, yes. and so that that didn't she try to be like an alien or something stupid? No, no. He was also kind of enamored of an alien during that episode, uh. but she was, uh, and she's some relation to Banshee, either yeah. like like a sister or yeah, I remember hearing that something like that. that. Something like that. I don't remember. Anyway, anyway. It was a long time ago. I, right, I, but yes. Yeah, so it. special effects. What do you think? Special effects. I'm going to go with a four. I might even give it a 4.5 just for mm. Havoc because okay. Havoc was Havoc really was cool. Pretty cool. Havoc really they was did cool. Some and neat Banshee stuff. and uh, and uh, Name. McCoy and even uh, McCoy even that's what I was thinking Beast. Yeah, pretty good. But yeah, anyway. All right, so for overall, a memorable movie, I mean, a, yeah. a not memorable movie, I should say. Yeah. It uh, once you start remembering it, it sounds better than it actually was. Yeah. No, that's not what I meant to say. Well, well kind of, sorta. I see I where you're going. I'm, I'm anyway. going to say overall maybe 7.5. 7.5. I'll go with 7. Hmm. Or 7. Well, okay. Anyway, in that vicinity. Somewhere in there, yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. So go see it, but don't expect to remember it afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Or get the DVD. Yeah, well, right. that's definitely. That would be the way to go. I mean, or not, stream it. It's in the Dollar in your Theater. Roku. It's, on, it's in Dollar Theater. If you're now, Hunter so. Lee. <laughs> so... Just all saying. one of you, anyway. Yeah, all one of you out there. But yeah. Uh, okay, so next movie, quickly. The next movie that came along was the Thor movie. The Thor which movie, was yes. Pretty spectacular. Which I tell you, and you know this because we talked about it. I would, I had very low expectations. Yes, he really thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be terrible. I had heard so many things that made it sound terrible. Yeah, and then it wasn't terrible. And then it wasn't at all. terrible. Matter of fact, it was not even close to terrible. It might. I think I would call it my favorite movie of the summer. Mm. I know you would say Green Lantern. I would say Green Lantern. But I think I would Green say Lantern. Thor. Dude. I think I would say so. Thor mostly because of Loki. Yes, that guy did an awesome Loki. Matter Loki of fact, I can't imagine perfect. anybody else being Loki. Yeah. I mean, he got down every angle of the character perfectly. He really did. And the fact that he... You, he, he was a little sympathetic at he first. He really was. You know, he could have been a good guy. Kind of maybe sort of was a good guy. Just a jokester, blah, yeah. blah, blah, and a trickster, which is kind which of... Which is what Loki was. Loki was supposed to be. And then... But then he went to the dark side. Well, yeah, then he found out about all the secrets and lies. Well, he found out, yeah, he found out that Odin wasn't even really his father. Yep. I mean, dude, I'm not your father, Luke. That would be a bummer. Yeah, if Darth Vader had said that, I mean, the whole movie would have been different. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, can you imagine? Luke would have been like, well, duh. Well, <laughs> duh. But yes, And then anyway. they would have moved on, so... But yes, anyway. so, acting... Acting, yes. Um, I am going to be super generous and say five. Because yes. love loves Loki. I like Thor a lot, too. Well, you realize Thor was Kirk's father in yes, Enterprise. Yes, he told me that. And I was like, what? Not and Enterprise. then it totally what was. Not Enterprise. Uh, Star Trek, the movie. Star Trek. Yeah, 20... Star, not Star Trek, the movie. No, it was Star Trek, the movie. Well, Just the more recent one. The more recent Star Trek. Which is called Star Trek. Which, yes. But the other original was called Star Trek. The, the Motion movie. Picture. It was called The Motion Picture. Oh, The Motion Picture. Good so I call the other one The point. Movie. And yes, that's subtle. See? Eh? That's subtle. Okay. Eh? We'll, we'll go with but that. Yeah. So, and then also Natalie Portman as the girl. Yeah. Um, she did pretty good overall. She did pretty well considering that she's really um, Amidala. Amidala? Amidala. Yes. Amidala. Amidala. Yes. So, uh, yes. <laughs> so anyway, and I mean, uh, you had like um, Heimdall. She was less and, regal. Well, true. <laughs> you had all the other Norse dudes. Yes, I liked how they tied in all the Norse. Yeah, it was very impressive, and and yet made it somewhat science fiction-y, spacey. Which, 
Yeah, and which then, is a, a neat take. It really is. I Treating like them as aliens that. instead of like supernatural. Yeah, it's kind of like, well, we're like, aliens, but we were misunderstood to be gods, you know. And we didn't, you know, correct. We them didn't want to correct them because they were they were young, you know. I mean, we don't want to irritate them. Yeah, that's totally the reason. But anyway, well, kind of <laughs> kind of makes a kind of sense. So that's really neat. pretty. Impressive. And I, I anyway. enjoyed that. But yeah, so I also like the dude, which unfortunately the, dude. the end gets turned. By Loki. Oh, that dude. The science dude. And we totally just spoiled the end of the movie for you. But oh, yeah. bummer. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, well, you should see anybody else. They don't know who we're talking about Yes, that's true. We're just so. going to say the dude. Because we just keep talking he, he, about this random dude. He's this dude. Um, but I liked him. I liked the guy that guards the bridge. He was fun. Oh, yes. He was uh, fun. Heimdall. That's what I thought his name was. Yeah. Yes. He's, he's pretty cool. cool. Anyway. That guy did a good job with him. Um, let's Particularly see. the honor and the what? plot line. Plotline, yes. Mm. Um, That's sort of what we were talking about with the sci-fi Actually, this stuff. one is very true to the comic. Yeah, it really was. Very, very true. <laughs> they even threw in, what was his name? Donald Blake? Something yes, like that. Donald Blake. They figured out a way they, to get Donald they Blake in there. They threw that in there. It and was pretty awesome. That was cute. I mean, that, that may be the only part that wasn't quite as true to the comic. Wow. But, but you got to give them points for trying to get they in tried, there. They tried, and it worked so for me. And actually, the girl, Foster, you know... She originally was a character who was a nurse that was interested in Blake, and Blake was interested in her. So that's a little different, a little different. but I like the spin on it better it, anyway. Yeah, it worked better this way. So now, there was a lot of criticism by regular critics that Natalie Portman just kind of phoned in the acting and mm. didn't do such a good job. I don't know. I mean, they said the same thing about Green Lantern's girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't agree with that either. So. Yeah, I thought she did a great job. Maybe we just don't know really what we're talking about. But, but, yeah, well, I mean, we, we could be completely ignorant. But We could be complete more. We're, we're, we're subject we like to our like own and, ideas. There you go. We, we own them. <laughs> yes. yes. But anyway. Um, so. Um, so for the plot, easily. Good. Easily super good. I'm going to say five again because I'm just super enamored of this movie. I'll go with five, yes, because it, I think they did a great really job. Good. And by and, the way, particularly since I was so yeah concerned that it was going to be a complete yeah. bomb. By the way, the scene with Stan Lee in it, in the truck, yes. that was great. That was awesome. That All was the Stan Lee awesome. scenes yes. this, this summer are awesome. Yes. So. Actually, what did he do in first class? Did he do anything? He was... He was in it. I don't. I don't remember the movie. And you're asking exactly. me about Stanley. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah so, so what else we have? Ambiance. Ambiance for Thor. Pretty much. The awesome. costumes were amazing. Uh, really, I really like the giant thingy that he had to fight. You know, the big golem mm, yeah, type yeah. thing. Uh, uh, yes. Um, what it's called, but Vanquisher, maybe. Oh, could maybe. Be. That's maybe. one of your books. No, it's not. Well, what's your book called? Banishers. Banishers. See, but yes. it's close. It's got Urshers in it. Uh, yes. He wrote a book. I wrote a book, and it's, now the it's world knows. not quite published yet. It's not close to published yet. Well, it's it, it's not close, it needs but work. it's getting that. No, it doesn't. It, it just needs need work. work it, it's, it's fine. It, we just need to package it, it and get work. the art done and then get it published. Yeah, well, that's another story for another day. Well, anyway. Yes, indeed, but I'm just saying. But ambiance. So, so. I don't really remember specifics about the music, but I remember uh-huh. loving it when I was listening to it. It was good. Especially during the scene, you know, where he's like flying up through the thunderstorm and fighting the Vanquisher. Oh, yeah. That bit was just epic. So that was good. There was a lot of epic. I'm going to go, at the very, very least, epic. four. Yeah. But maybe even five. I'll probably agree maybe, with that, too. Maybe. I'll stay with four, but I, yeah. I'm, I'm good with it. I don't know. I did love, like, the ice world that I forgot Yes. Uh... Yeah, and all that. But anyway, so special effects. Can't remember the name of it either. I can't. I keep thinking Bifrost, but that's like the bridge. That Bifrost bridge, yes. Oh well. So anyway, somebody um, will write us and tell us. I'm sure, and that will be good. But yes, so so uh, uh, special oh, effects. Yes, a wallet in my pocket. You randomly have a wallet for no reason. Well, it was bulging out, and I didn't know what it was. And I was like, "What's that?" And then I thought, mm-hmm. well, "Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just." Um, Bird, you know that kind of thing, or squirrel, squirrel bird squirrel. works either way. Bird, yeah, bird, bird. tree. Sometimes we recognize trees. Mm. Green. Anyway, that tree is green. That, yes, yes, exactly. But anyway, so um, special effects. Special effects were were good. good. I'm not sure I would say they were even necessarily as good as first class, but they kind of didn't need to be. You know. Well, they were downplayed. Yeah. You know, it was. It looked more realistic. Although, you know, it's not every day you have For a comic book movie. Giant. Yeah. 
you know, universe type situations yeah. like that. But, but yeah, the Bifrost Bridge looked really amazing. Yeah, that was cool. That whole effect was awesome. So the lightning uh, worked well. Everything worked really well. So I'm going to go with four again. All right, sounds good. So what? So overall, yes. I would say 9.5. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to go special. with 9. Okay. I it was good. It, but let's, uh, before we wax too long and people get, you know, yeah. where they're wanting to move on, let's go with Green Lantern quickly. Yes, Green Lantern, yes. So. Epic, awesome, epic, wonderful. truly epic. And Lots of CGI. No one believes it for some reason. I know. Some, a lot of people say too much CGI. Dude, it's a space thing. Yeah. With blue dudes. I don't know. I don't know if Little I would blue have, dudes. I don't know if I would have preferred an actual costume or not, but what they did really did work. I liked it. It worked really well. You know, and particularly the whole thing where he throws his arms back and goes cushion. And I mean the costume like, dude. like glows and stuff. Yeah, I mean which the cosmic works. It for kinda Green it's the way it should be for Green Lantern. Yeah, it it you know, makes I mean, sense. Can't do that with you know, comic books, so yeah, you exactly. can't blow on a comic book. But well, you can try. You can but pretend. Doesn't really, but work as well. Anyway, but yeah, so that was good acting. The acting was great. Ryan Reynolds was awesome. A lot of as people Lantern. say they really didn't like the acting. A lot of I critics don't get that. Sinestro. Sinestro, Sinestro was, good. was very. He good. actually pulled off being noble and good at at first, and then kind until of he started turning just slightly. Can you tell we just like those little. characters that start out as kind of sympathetic, but then yeah, you know, well, it's it's, it's different of, because normally it's just either pure evil or pure good. Yeah, you normally see them after they're already evil. Yeah, you know, so, this is this like, is how he turned. Yeah, but so. um, I didn't. Well, we'll get to that when we get to plot, and I probably shouldn't spoil it, so never mind. But okay. Uh, acting was really good. Mm -hmm. Maybe four, I'm going to say. Four is good. I mean, for me. Yeah. You know, of course, I liked it a lot anyway. Yeah, it was a great movie. It was an awesome movie. I was quite enthusiastic about the movie before I went, as most people know from the show. I was worried. I was excited. I was worried because yeah. I was excited. And yeah, I noticed that it had a lot get, to live up to. Yeah, whenever I get really excited about something, it usually doesn't end up being yeah, as awesome I know, as I thought it would I know be. What you mean. But this one really surprised this me. This one actually held being up. Awesome. And the fact that they again, again, they were true to the story. That is there the were next a few point, too. slight diversions. But they were really pretty yeah, true they had, to the story. They had Sinestro before he turned evil. Yep. They had can never remember the fish guy's name. The fish guy's name. Oh, uh uh Yes. Our yes. our And friend. then they had Killer <laughs> Kilowog, yes. And like Kilowog. Uh, Kilowog cool. was fun. Um, By the way, speaking of Kilowog and yes. the other characters, there is a Green Lantern Emerald Knights animated yes. Blu-ray. And that was also good. That was very good. Very and it really good. rounds the characters out. And it helps to see that as well as seeing Although, the movie. I'm unclear as, what, as to whether it's supposed to take place sometime after the movie or in I think a... In it an had alternate to, timeline, maybe? Yeah, I think it had to take place after the movie. I don't know. Probably after the first movie and before the second one, because... Because Sinestro was Sinestro's, still not evil. Right. And we're assuming he will be by the next Or movie. if he is evil, he's hiding it well. well. Or that. You know, which you always kind of look at him like, hmm. Which I mean, he, any guy that looks that satanic, you well, kind of have to go, hmm. So, yeah, Spock well, had that problem, too, with the pointy true. ears and eyebrows. But yes, um, the plot line of the movie, though, getting back to the movie. Yes. I really liked. Um, a lot of people didn't like the ending, by the way. Why? Yeah, how he defeated Parallax. Uh, okay. I had not heard that. Yeah, a lot, or at least a few people told me that they didn't like okay. it. Okay. And I assume that. Well, I'm not going to spoil that either. I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm going to say I really liked it. I yeah. thought it worked really well. I thought it worked pretty well. I liked the whole movie. Although, I mean, there. I came out of the movie going, dude, I want a ring. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much want a ring. Just want a power ring. Yeah, I really mean, do. it's just an awesome power to have. But, I mean, yeah, so, your imagination made oh, yes. some power. Can you imagine my imagination? <laughs> it would be very there dangerous. There would be bunnies hopping around. There would be bunnies. And it would Indeed. be terrible. And it would be green. But, and that would work. And it green would work all too bunnies. well. It would work. I talk about green furry bunnies quite a bit, actually. Okay, so... <laughs> Yes, well, Mike face. Danger. Danger, Will Robinson. Pay, anyway. pay your psychiatrist danger money. What is it? Put your psychiatrist on danger money, baby. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Reference <laughs> to Hitchhikers. Uh, yes. Which we love. We knew that. Yes, but but yeah, two. Number. Plot. And onward. Number. 
Plot, I would go with a four. Four? A four, yes. I was going to say four, too, so we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> so, four. a four. A four. <laughs> hey, dude. Well, there you go. But anyway, so... Uh, ambiance. Uh, ambiance. I have to work on the numbers. You know me in numbers. Mm. Um, okay, ambiance for me. Super awesome. It was like five. I might even go with that. I might really. Uh, a lot of people say, yeah, but CGI. Dude, it's a comic book. And they they did it right. It looked good. Yes. It so, looked really good. So get over it. Especially the Blue Men. Yes. The Guardians. The Guardians. Let's completely forget the names. The, they call it Universe, but it's really the Guardians of the Galaxy. They were really? Expanded. Was it? Yes. Guardians of the Galaxy in the comic books. I always heard Universe. Well, they expanded. They may have expanded it even by the time uh, the dude did. wrote the new version of the comic book. Which they also made a lot of references to. Yes. And if you see the DVD extras on the, or Blu-ray. On I the, have not seen those. I need to do that. Though, eh, awesome. But Very yeah. good stuff. I so, really like anyway. the ambiance. Gonna? Did we already give it a rating? We did. Yeah, never mind. But what's our overall? Well, there's one more category. Oh, uh, okay. Special effects. Special which effects. we already touched on a bit. Eh. Here's the thing about that. Yes. I mean, it's totally CGI. So Pretty is much. It, is it? How do you? Yeah. Is it like a special effect that you're integrating with? with real characters because they pretty much just they walked around in the suits and they didn't have to have any kind of backgrounds i mean you know i mean it's pretty much all special effects pretty much so that kind of actually makes it harder to give it a higher rating almost because i like the special effects i like the overall style there were a few places that the special effect was a little obvious okay that's just where we are at technologically. Like the whole uncanny valley thing they talk about? Well, how he would move sometimes and there would be just a little shift. Mm, yeah. You know, just, just a little. Uh, but overall, it was really good. I'm, I'm going to go with like, at least a four. I'm thinking like Avin Sur's face, you know, kind of looked... It looked a little, a little rubbery, maybe. Official, particularly really considering that it was totally CGI. Yeah. that uh, When you think about it like that, though, it is very impressive. Avin Sur did look cool, though. But yeah, I'll go so, with his four. I'll go with a four. Yeah. So what about overall? I know you're going to rate it high. Oh, dude. Uh, so what? What's this? Is a one to ten, right? Yeah. I'm going to go with a nine. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go with a nine because I, I really liked it. I say the same thing. No, so, yeah, just slightly okay. below Thor, not much. So just what do we have left? Just slightly. Just Captain America. Captain America. Well, now there you go. Yeah. The big Captain one. Captain America was another one that I thought had a potential to be a serious flop. Yeah. It could have been bad. It could have Matter of fact, really if you sucked. go back and look at some of the Captain Americas that had been <laughs> done in the past, we saw one on Siffy. Yes. Sci fi, by the way, Siffy. And uh, it was so agonizingly <laughs> bad, we probably saw only the first 15 minutes. No, we saw the middle 15 minutes. Middle actually. 15 minutes. Oh, it was He just... was writing. A mo it wasn't even oh. Cap, first of all. It was, it was his son. It was Cap's son, yes. But the second, he was riding, riding, the, riding, riding this with motorcycle a plastic with a plastic shield. Shield, shield. plastic oh. see-through shield, yeah. the windshield, and it was the windshield, and it, it was miraculously was... the windshield, and then when he took it off, it was a shield shield. Yeah, and then on top of that, there's this bit where he throws the bike <laughs> on top of a wall, yeah, and it goes like this. It goes. <laughs> Think 1960s, you it know? Was, oh man, just it was bad. So it could have been much worse. But yeah, it, it had nothing <laughs> it to live up to at all. <laughs> to be worse, it really the ball was way down here. Yeah. So, 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 but, but, given all that, the CGI effect of making him scrawny and weak. Which comes later. Let's do this in order. Oh, oh man. I know. Okay. Do acting first. Because Hugo acting, Weaving. Oh, Hugo Weaving. Hugo Dude. Weaving. Evil, evil persona. I pretty much love Hugo Weaving, whatever he's in. And uh, what's the, what was the Caps oh, actor? Oh, oh, I need. <gasps> I knew I, that before Because he said, was Johnny Storm. So yeah. you're thinking he was Johnny Storm. Oh, I did geez. not like him as Johnny Storm. I loved him as Johnny Storm. I did Storm, not like him as Johnny Storm. I didn't like the character Johnny Storm in Fantastic Four. I really liked movie, that period. movie and his character. And he it. did so. And that, uh, But the actor, whose name escapes us at the moment. I can't even. It's anyway, a very normal name. It's a name. You know, it's like John Smith, but it's not you know, John Smith. Bill obviously. Ben. Simple yeah. name. Okay. Anyway. So. Oh um, yeah, he did really great. As so he, he did, did not remind me of he Johnny was at all. Honorable, he was as a weakling, yeah. strong as a weakling, which is which hard is to impressive. do. Yeah, and he pulled it off, and he and was patriotic without being 
uh, corny. Yeah. He really that pulled was really it my worry that they were going to make it. And particularly in today's scheme climate. where patriotic is, is bad, kind of, which I don't agree with. Yeah. But they made it a period movie. It worked It worked well as a period movie. And, and that's why they got the director who was the director. He had also done Rocketeer. Ah, I've never seen that. Oh, you should see that movie. You should see that movie. Uh, Rocketeer, another good period movie, fighting the Nazis. Uh, had the guy who, the Nazi, head Nazi guy on it was the guy who played uh, Volkov on Chuck. I don't think I saw that season. Uh, oh, that's true. Or he was also uh, James Bond. He was also the Lord President on uh, the recent... Oh, that guy. Yes, that okay. guy. That was the guy who was the Nazi dude. Interesting. And he was actually pretty bad as Lord President on he Doctor Who, too. He was pretty evil. He, well, he does evil well. Apparently. Even as Volkov, he did evil really well. And then once his brain got fixed, he was so nice and happy. That's creepy. It okay. was very creepy. It was, it was well done. I liked it. But yeah. But that um, was Chuck. Chuck fan. Um... <laughs> I don't remember I mean, the girl's geek, name at all. you gotta love Chuck. Yeah. Pretty much. I don't remember the girl's name at all in Captain America. But Captain America, yeah, no, she did, I don't remember her. She, she did pretty well. She did a pretty good job. Not great, the, in my opinion, but good. What were their names? What was the name of the team? Uh, the Howling... The Howlers. The team. There's a... I don't know, whatever. There's two words. Yeah, I can't even... The something Howling... The Howling somethings. Somethings. But anyway... So you had anyway, Bucky. It's cool. Bucky. It was good as Bucky. Bucky and it should was, have been younger. Well, yeah. Okay, not the same and it, age. It was really creepy to That's have okay. him look so much bigger than Cap at first. <laughs> at and then, first, yeah, and, and then, then switch it around. That was so creepy. That whole effect was awesome. I, I did like some of the lines they had, like, you know, I remember you being smaller or something like that. Yeah. Bucky like said. Weren't you smaller? Weren't you smaller? <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Um, I don't remember the other one's names, but. Uh, well, there was Dum Dum Dugan. Okay, yeah. I remember him. Yeah. He was fun. Uh, the French guy, the French they called guy, Frenchy. Who was fun. Uh, again, this is all true to the original Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos. The Howling Commandos, okay. Sergeant Fury and the but Howling Commandos. But did they have Fury in the Howling Commandos? They they had Fury in the original Howling Commandos. Well, he wasn't in, in the this. movie? In the movie, see, remember in this rewrite, it's it's supposed to be Fury's father. Well, that's dumb first, but I know, second, it's not true to I the I don't comment. remember him being in the movie. He wasn't at all, other than at the very end. Well, yeah. You know, which, again, slight thing. spoiler. Well, that's expected, though. Kind I knew of that was coming. But, but um, I mean, a chance to put Samuel L. Jackson in the movie. Dude. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. Pretty much have to do it. Besides, Fury. Especially if you have a purple lightsaber. Did you know that Fury was redone specifically for Samuel L. Jackson? I did, actually. That's I knew that. Pretty that's pretty interesting. Cool. And Samuel L. Jack- L. Jackson is very much into being Fury. Oh, yeah. Like he was into being Mace Windu before they killed him off. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have to die spectacularly, okay? Yeah, and, I, and I have to have a purple lightsaber. <laughs> I mean, you got to love a guy who takes his character that seriously. Well, yeah. I mean, really you know, and he, he's Samuel L. Jackson. I mean, yeah. he gets to do that. Yeah. And he did it well. And he did. Um, but okay. yes. So, acting number. Number for acting. Acting, I'm going to go with a four. At least. Easily. Easily four. Four and a half, maybe. Maybe four and a half, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean... It, it was, was good. brilliant. The fact they were able to do, like I said, the whole patriotism and all that without, without being, being corny, at all corny, without being at all sticky, beautiful, was really well done. Because I was worried. I was really yeah, worried it was going to turn into that movie that we saw. <laughs> oh, man. Please, no. <laughs> so bad. Um, so, let's see. What does <clears> that yes. leave us? Uh, we have so next we plot. Covered. Plot line. Plot, yes. Which was, of course. Plot was good. Good. And plot was very accurate. True to the comic. Uh, with a few like deviations like the age of Bucky. Bucky yeah. was more like Robin to Batman. What about the Jewish guy? Uh, was he in the original? He was indeed the don't scientist. Don't his name at all. But no. he was Erskine? really fun. He was really fun. Was it Erskine? I don't know. Dr. Erskine. Something oh, like that. another thing I forgot to mention with the acting. So. The guy that played Hugo Weaving's henchman. Um, I'm not remembering that. You know, the... Slightly baldish guy with like the glasses, the scientist. Oh, the little guy. Yeah, what was his name? I the don't character remember. Or the actor, either one. He, I've seen him in a lot of stuff. He does a lot of character acting, but yeah, I don't but, remember. But he did a good job. I like I that. Can't he he kind of was should. like, mm, you know, I'm being really evil here, but I don't really want to be all that evil. But it was uh, quite good. That was kind of. good. I don't remember the character's name even. I don't. This either. is really sad. But oh well. Anyway. Anyway. Um. Moving along. So yeah, the plot was great. Um, yes. The ending was impressive. Very. I was. 
you know, you know how it's going to end because you yeah, know the story. Yeah, if you're a real comic fan, you know They really exactly pulled off happen. making it dramatic and mm-hmm. having the tension there, even though you knew what was going to happen. Uh, now, they kind of glossed over all of Cap and the uh, Howling Commandos career. That is true. That it was like true. a montage part in the middle. Uh, in, in a sense, complete with montage music. Yeah, <laughs> with montage music. Uh, so, but they could have a whole series of movies of they their really, adventures. They really could. And really should. But maybe anyway. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. Well, anyway, but I'm waiting for the Avengers. That's gonna be an awesome. That's gonna movie. be an awesome movie. But yeah, the the plot gets I say another four point five. Yep. And I also loved how At they least. just threw in that slight reference to the Norse stuff again. Yeah, just to they keep tied that the movies together. They kept that going. That's pretty cool. That was very impressive. Very cool that they did that. Um, so ambiance, ambiance, dude. So, so I'm gonna go good. with five. Easy, because Easy five. they just nailed it. They it nailed perfect. and Red Skulls. How he like the mask slip right, at one point, and, you, and, and you, you just had see that the red. red. Oh man, that was so awesome. good. That was awesome. So there's a lot of awesome there. If you if you get a chance to see the movie, see it in the theater. But if Definitely. not, get the Blu-ray. Yeah. Because yeah, definitely. It was, and we see them non 3D. Okay. Yeah. We're not into the whole yeah, 3D I heard thing. That the 3D. I think this movie would not be good in 3D. Yeah, the 3D is supposed to be really I mean, bad. It's supposed in this movie. to be 1940s. Yeah. You don't want to see 3D. You don't want to see. No. So anyway. I don't want to see 3D anyway, but that's me. So, but, yeah, well, um, <laughs> true. Um, so, what else do we have? Effects. I mean, making really him good. scrawny like that. That was, was just unbelievable. Incredible. Cool. I don't even know how. I, yeah, I mean, they really. I assumed they got a different actor. I really did. No, but it was. It was really it him. Was him. It was so weird. And he, it made him seem so much bigger and buffer later. Yeah, true. Uh, you know, which that had to be his real body, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, he didn't look that tough as the Human Torch. I no, think he must no, have walked up he quite did, a bit. Yeah, definitely. Definitely so that was cool. in there. Real uh, but, dedication there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I ain't going to bulk up. I mean, you know, not in that sense. Anyway. <laughs> but, yeah. So, um, um, I don't know. There weren't a lot of flashy special effects in this one. No. But, but there were, like, the um, it was realistic the laser leaf. guns that they had for yeah. for Hydra. Yeah. And the really cool plane crash scene. And when they, when they shot the dudes and they went... Poof, Yes. With the smoke and the So it was definitely falling. very good. It was kind very, of, very good. That kind of made you go, Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so they, they achieved a cool effect there. So uh, so what does that leave us? Well, we haven't given a number for that yet. Oh, for special effects? Yeah. Dude, five. I don't know. I'm going to go 4.5 again because yeah. it wasn't. I was just totally impressed. It, it was really, was, it was really I was brilliant. kind of blown away with I you. just, you know, I got a. Put that little edge of yeah, I know, I know, I know. But so overall, overall, what do you think for total numbers, truly epicness? What is it? I'm gonna go with eight. Eight. Interesting. Because I went with nine for ah, yeah. You know, pretty it's, much the only reason. It's slightly not as good, but yeah, it's because still amazing. it's got. Otherwise, Green Lantern wouldn't be the number one for me. True. You know what I'm saying? So well, here's the thing. Yes, I. I kind of think of it like this. If I'm going to rate it as a classic movie, mm-hmm. I'm going to say 10. It's definitely a classic it movie. It is a classic. It holds up better than most all the Marvel movies. Yeah, if I'm going to rate it as my personal favorite, it's going to be closer to 8. <laughs> Interesting Because I don't actually tend to like classics as much as I like yeah. one-off Movies. Well, you might not yeah. like The Rocketeer so much because it's a very classic. Well, oriented. that's not to say I don't like classic movies because I love Independence Day. Oh yeah, Independence well, Day. Is, Independence Day is, probably, is possibly my favorite movie ever. Probably is it one really of my might favorite be. all-time movies. So if you haven't seen Independence Day? You really need to best see Will it. Smith movie ever. Yes, hands down. Well, I mean, you got Will Smith. You got you got that guy. <laughs> the guy, Goldblum. <laughs> Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Thank Goldblum. you. Um, <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> like then so, the guy who played the president was uh, awesome. Yes, he was. You know, it's kind of like why can't we have that guy? Exactly. As uh, exactly. Anyway, also but, um, 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 Judd Hirsch. I don't know who that who is. Who is uh, Jeff Goldblum's father? Is the rabbi? Oh, kind of the Epps father from Numbers. Yes, <laughs> yes that's what I know Charlie, him from. Charlie Epps from Numbers. Um, yes, that's wasn't. See, I remember yes. him from uh, Taxi. Ah, and yes, much you, mentioned that. Days. you mentioned that. So, but anyway, he did a good job as kind of coming back from not quite losing his faith as a, as a Jewish guy, as a rabbi. We're but, losing our light. Yeah, you know, we are losing our light. The light goes shift. You know, that's because we're running so long. Yes, well. Anyway. It's my so, fault. Yeah, his fault. Um, so, there you go. But yeah, so, 
So I, all, all the acting was good. Even even the lady who was uh, President Rosalind from uh, Battlestar Galactica as the president's wife. That was her. Who? who? In you which know movie? from Battlestar Galactica. I know who you the mean. The recent but, one. But which which movie was this in? Independence Day. Oh, Day. okay. I thought yeah. we were back on Captain America again. No. I was confused. Oh, well, okay. Because they got Roosevelt to play Roosevelt. <laughs> Well, more or less, kind of, sort of. I mean, they played yes. clips from his, you know, yeah. speeches. Yeah. And then I think they did have one bit where they had a Roosevelt impersonator just kind of do one do quick a scene. Yeah. But anyway. But anyway. Moving on. So, uh, so anyway, and that so, was also really good. I should mention how they cut in like period clips, right? And um, commercials. And and uh, you got to wonder which one, you know, how much of the newsreel footage was real newsreel footage, and yeah. how much of it was how shot. much was remade. Yeah. So I mean, they did a good job. Was, what are you gonna it say? Was great. They did a good it job. Really was. Um, so, those are the movies of the summer that we saw. Well, and then there's also Transformers, and yeah. there's yeah. Sherlock Holmes coming out later this year. Oh, yeah. But Highly those worthwhile. aren't superhero movies, and that's what we were talking no. about this week. So, so we're talking superheroes. We may talk others later. Yeah, we may talk so about real Transformers. Quick like, real quick like, because yes, okay. we're running totally out of time. Ow. Uh, quick Bump the table. games that are coming. Ah, games that are coming, yes. So what you're excited about? Here is you the thing. You talk drink. Very fine. Fair enough. There. Yeah. I'll just mess my words up, and that'll mm. work. But yeah, the they're used to it. True. The, <laughs> <laughs> the game that I'm excited for this year, mm -hmm. uh, since Dragon Age Two has already come out. Yes. The game I'm excited for, Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim. Okay. I cannot wait for that game because it's so been, is Mass Effect not. Good? No, that's next year. That's next year. Okay. But it's been, I think, five years ish since the last Elder Scrolls game. Ah. So we are way overdue. Okay. And they, they've taken that time and they have done it right, it looks like. Cool. But yeah, that's going to be 11-11-11, the 11th ah, of November. Cute. Yeah. And then also 11-1-11 is going to be Uncharted 3, which, you know, you may, you may know that they had the multiplayer beta recently. Loved that. Mm. Me and Vlad got on that and it was brilliant. Yes. Vlad, of course, being his cousin, yes. also known as Josh. Also known as Josh. But I yes. call him Vlad because now I'm going to promo our YouTube channel. That's a good idea. You should do that. We have a YouTube channel. You can search for us. We are GMZX Productions because I am known Game as Game Master ZX. ZX. Yes. Yes. Um, and it is awesome. We're currently doing Donkey Kong 64 and Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. They're rocking the classics. Oh, yeah, always. I wish I had worn that shirt, but it yeah, wasn't Yeah, should have rocked the classic shirt. Although you do have I've the got... Mario Luigi yeah, 08. Yeah. It's America. Yeah, you can't really see it, but yeah. yeah. It Mario Luigi, right? Maybe you can throw up a picture like of the eh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. So but, <laughs> there you so, go. There you go. And um, so yes, do definitely check out the, the channel because he's got a lot of videos, a lot of walkthroughs, a lot wow. of stuff. Only one of them ever actually got has finished. more uh, <laughs> what do you call it, uh, fans than me. I have 400 subscribers now. Dude. Yeah, I'm going to do something special when I hit 500. So here's okay. what you got to do. You got to go sign up for my channel. <laughs> We're not having a competition, apparently. Yes. Well. Well. I've got <laughs> a long way to go. To well, get anywhere near 400. The so. thing I noticed was that at least half of my subscribers came from my Naruto videos, which mm. I don't even do anymore. So. Well, yeah. Yeah. But, so. But anyway. But you, you've got to expand your horizons. Yeah. Everything so there you go, the Game Master set, very long Game Master segment, but in honor well, it was the 200th anniversary show. And it was the inaugural, re-inaugural episode. Re-inaugural, whatever you said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, nah. Nah, nah, nah. So there this you go. This one in however many years it has been. Yes, this is going to be a very long show. Which is show. perfectly good. For 200, okay, we'll go with that. I mean, I, I even thought about doing a lot of geek culture. I thought about doing, you know, old, like, replays of, of uh, Cosmonauti and uh, <laughs> I listened to that again recently I did I was like, too recently what? that was just awesome <laughs> where did you find and this? Uh, what else there was other things you know that we used to do for geek culture that were just awesome matter of fact we heard of Weird Al today and Spider-Man Spider-Man or Ode to a Superhero Ode to a Superhero uh, love that song gotta love the Weird Al really you know good. what I'm saying so Anyway, hard to do a lot of that because a lot of it was audio based, and we were we yeah, used to be an audio true. based. Well, you could find a video and splice it in, but I'm not sure he would appreciate That's that. That's the problem is the legality. Yeah, not sure he would appreciate that. So there you go. Actually, uh, I'm not sure he would appreciate actually, the audio. Weird Al, so. pro Weird Al probably wouldn't mind it. Well, maybe. But uh, his other people might. Publisher might. Ah, so, yeah. You know there, you, there you go. Uh, there's so the anyway, problem. 
there you go. Yep. So we'll do another Game Master segment another time. Whenever that is. Whenever that is, because we won't make promises, because sometimes we just run out of time. Hmm. So there you go. Like, we actually... Yes. Should I talk about this? You know, how we had to delay this a day, or does that even matter? This delayed us a day? Oh, yes. I got, we were going to do it yesterday. We were going to do it yesterday, and, and I, then, I got involved in a geek out. Yeah. wasn't my fault. And you time. saw the results of the geek out earlier in the netcast with the airtime source fabric product that was the And Linux. he said it right this time. I, yes, I had to work on it, though. I really did, because I keep on saying SourceForge. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so that was the Geek Software of the Week for Linux. Yes. And I didn't do a Geek Software of the Week for the regular Geek Software of the Week because we've got so much time. We're eating up all the time. Yes, we must. And keep, I actually just kind of did time. So. Uh -huh. There you go. But it's an excuse. I'll go with the excuse. Yeah, see, it's it works. It's 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 karma. It's esoteric. Esoteric, yes. Bye. So there yes, you bye. go. Boy, that was a long. This is a long. This is the longest netcast ever for me. <laughs> Leo Laporte's got me beat. He does quit for like two hours every week. Whew. Anyway, so remember, congratulations again to Hunter Lee for winning the Roku. And remember until next time that the doctor is out of here.